This is a brief video on thyroid cancers, the four main types of thyroid cancers. We're going to be talking about the most common four carcinomas that originate in the thyroid tissue. And uh, we have a picture here of a tumor that has grown into a blood vessel, a tumor that has started spreading from the thyroid. And we're going to be talking about four such carcinomas. Let's begin with papillary carcinoma. And one quick note, these, these four listed across the left here are kind of listed in increasing severity, increasing ability to metastasize and to spread. Uh, so let's start with papillary carcinoma. This one, as I said, uh, it's, is the best prognosis, has a frequency of about 80% of all the thyroid cancers. There's a 10 year survival of about 95%. So it's a pretty, pretty good prognosis. The female to male ratio is three to one. There's a peak incidence in the thirties and to fifties years of age. Grossly for a papillary carcinoma, we see irregular contours like you might expect of any cancer, and there's no capsule around it. That's to differentiate it from the follicular carcinoma, which has a pretty well-defined capsule, uh, capsule structure. Uh, on histology for papillary carcinoma, we see nuclear clearing. This uh, nuclear clearing is pretty characteristic. The nuclei appear empty, and it's called an orphan anti-I. We'll show you a picture of that in a second. You also see nuclear grooves here. The nucleus, uh, the, the the nucleus material kind of aggregates together and makes what look like looks like a groove, looks like a darker line, a darker staining line that looks like a nuclear groove. We also see intranuclear. Pseudo inclusions, we see somoma bodies, which are of course calcifications. We see reduced colloid, we see crowded cells, and we sometimes see papillary architecture. If you zoom out enough, um, it kind of kind of has a papillary appearance. So we're gonna show a picture of histology in a bit. These papillary carcinomas are derived from follicular cells uh, as opposed to the parafollicular cells like the medullary carcinomas. There's an increased risk of papillary cancer if you have RET or BRAF mutations, and also if you've had radiation exposure as a child. So a lot of people who, uh, who go in, get radiation for acne, they might end up being at risk for papillary carcinoma in the future. Papillary carcinoma, like many cancers, is spread by lymphatic invasions, and it often goes to the cervical nodes and the neck, and it has pretty slow growth, so that contributes to its good prognosis. It's a slow-growing tumor. This papillary carcinoma, because, it, uh, because it's part of the follicular cells, because it's derived from the follicular cells, it secretes thyroglobulin, which you know is a precursor to thyro thyroid hormones, and it also takes up radioiodine treatment for this one and for many of the others is lobectomy. You take out the, the entire affected cancerous lobe and you might end up taking out the entire thyroid uh, if necessary and if it has started spreading. You, uh, you get radio, radio iodine treatment as well if you're a high risk patient. Uh, so they would go in, they would remove the lobe, they would remove the thyroid and then give you a dose of radio iodine to try to kill the remaining cancerous tissue that they weren't able to resect surgically. And finally, after all that, you might also get TH, TSH suppression, uh, and that would be to prevent the cancer from growing further. So you would give people thyroid hormone replacement to try to suppress uh, THA, TSH, TSH from further activating the thyroid. And this is what we were talking about earlier. These are the orphan anti eyes. You can kind of see one in the middle here can point to it there, kind of looks like an eye. And uh, you can see that the, the, the nuclear material has included around. Some of these look like grooves. That might be a nuclear groove. That right there, also a nuclear groove. Uh, but mainly the orphan anti eyes that look like that in the nuclei of these cells. Next is follicular carcinoma. Epidemiology here is less frequent, a little more aggressive than papillary, uh, but still less aggressive than medullary. So frequency 10%, uh, we have same female to male ratio of three to one. This one peaks a little older, 40s to 60 years of age. On histology here, we see a monotonous, uniform population of cells. They're often overlapping, like many cancer cells, and you also see a micro acinar formation, so kind of like a gland-like formation, but smaller than you would expect. Reduced colloid again, and you might also see herthal cells here, and we'll show you a picture of herthal cells. These cancers are also derived from the follicular cells in the thyroid, so papillary and follicular come from the follicular cells. 
There's an increased risk in people who have RAS mutations, which is a proto-oncogene, of course. Follicular carcinoma is unique in that it often spreads by vascular invasion. There's uh, f- fewer cancers that do this, but it spreads through the blood. And uh, this one does have a capsule that surrounds it. And what defines follicular carcinoma is that it, this, this, what, what defines it as a carcinoma is that it breaks through this capsule. So when we do spread through the vasculature, we spread uh, more more so than the more so than the papillary tumors, and when it breaks through the capsule, that allows us to differentiate it from follicular adenoma. So follicular adenoma and papillary, or excuse me, follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma cannot be differentiated on histology. But if you look at it grossly, follicular carcinoma breaks through the capsule. This one also secretes thyroglobulin, and it also takes up radioiodine as a result of being from the follicular cells in the thyroid. Same treatment here. You do a lobectomy, maybe remove the entire thyroid, and as we said earlier, higher risk patients can get radioiodine to kill off the remaining cancer cells, and they might also get thyroid hormone replacement to suppress TSH. So this is a picture of a Herthel cell very characteristic of follicular carcinoma of the thyroid. Next is medullary carcinoma. This one's getting more serious. It's more aggressive. It spreads early. It has a lower frequency, about 5%. Uh, there's two, two kinds of medullary carcinoma. There's sporadic, which is about 80%, uh, more common in females, peaks 40s to 60s. There's familial medullary carcinoma, which is about even male to female ratio, and it peaks at a much earlier age, um, sometimes in children. On histology, we see neuroendocrine appearance with packets of uniform cells. What's really high yield here is that the stroma is made of amyloid. The area around the cells is made of amyloid. So we can, of course, stain this with the classic cargo red stain. And uh, when we see a bunch of cancerous cells laying over a bed of amyloid, we think medullary carcinoma. These are a little different because we uh, these these tumors derive from the parafollicular cells, unlike the first two that we talked about. And if you remember, the parafollicular cells are also called C cells. C is for clear, but they produce calcitonin. So to track these tumors, to track these cancers, we kind of measure calcitonin as opposed to measuring uh, thyroglobulin or other or other thyroid indicators, <clears throat> because these medullary carcinomas are derived from the parafollicular cells. There's an increased risk of medullary cancer in people who have the MEN 2A and MEN 2B <coughs> associations, and also with the mutations in the RET uh, proto-oncogene as well. These spread pretty frequently and pretty early. They are much more aggressive than the previous two. They do not secrete thyroglobulin, and they do not take up radioiodine. And this makes sense because these derived from the parafollicular cells, the clear cells. Same treatment here. Ideally, we would be able to remove it all. Um, and we can also uh, add thyro, uh, thyroid hormone replacement for normal TSH. We're not, we're not going for a uh, TSH suppression here because, again, these come from the parafollicular cells, not from the follicular thyroid hormone producing cells. <clears throat> Here we see medullary carcinoma uh, on histology. On the left of the image, you can see quite a bunch of amyloid. That's classic for this for this uh, for this cancer, and it's it's kind of like a, a bed of a bed of pink that the cells are sitting on. That's all amyloid. If you look more to the right, almost the the, the right fourth of the image, we see what looks like normal thyroid follicles, um, or or the closest that we get on this image to normal thyroid follicles. So kind of contrasting the medullary carcinoma from the normal there. And lastly, we have the pretty rare anaplastic carcinoma. These are much more rare, and they're also called undifferentiated carcinoma because they are so poorly differentiated. These are very aggressive, and unfortunately, there's a very poor prognosis. These are the most deadly of the four, and they occur twice as frequently in men. This is usually an older patient population, too. People in their 60s to 80s uh, might get anaplastic carcinoma. There's several variants on histology, uh, but the, the unifying feature is that they're all high-grade. They're all uh, very aggressive and, and poor prognosis cancers. They're very infiltrative into local structures, especially the soft tissues of the neck. Um, they often show widespread metastases and cause early mortality after diagnosis. These do not take up radioiodine either.